Welcome again, everyone, to the Public Health Improvement Webinar. I'm your host, Liliana Johnson, with the National Network of Public Health Institutes, welcoming you today to Kaizen, Rapid Change for the Better. What is the Kaizen methodology and what can it do for you? We're joined with our public health practitioners, Aaron Moulds, Ugit Mehta, and Sarah Warren, as well as Chris Bujak and Pam Facilio from Continual Impact. We have a full house and we hope that you'll have a full amount of information that you'll take from today. So before we get to what we're going to do today specifically, I have a question for you. This is the question. What do you want to take from the webinar? You probably read the description, but what, what were you hoping to come away with? If you could type in the left side panel, this is a participation part of it. Please let me know. So while you're taking just a little bit of time to let me know what you want to take from this, I'm going to pull up a template that we have been using. You're looking at this and you're thinking, okay, yes, uh, you're most undoubtedly familiar with an AIM statement template defining the problem and the goals for a QI project and including measures and time specifics. This, too, is a goal statement that we have been using throughout the program brought to us by our partners at Continual Impact. There are a few more components to it, but for the sake of using it for our agenda, this is I've included just a few. And just to kind of walk through this for a minute, it's really getting everybody on the same page about what the goal, the purpose is, why are we all here. You could do this for an agenda. You could do this for a whole project. Who actually benefits from this? Just definitely defining your audience, and how will you do it? What's your basic approach so that what is the ultimate goal? And I'm going to show you how I filled it out for the sake of our discussion today. So here's what we want to do. We want to tell you a little bit more about what Kaizen is. What does it look like? What is a Kaizen process? And who is it for? It's for you all in case you might want to use it. We want to show you what can be done with it and just kind of resolve some of the mystery behind it in case there is some mystery. So who's going to be talking to you today? We thought we'd show you who is on the line. That's me, Liliana Johnson. I'm in the top right. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about the program behind this. We took 10 different health departments and none of them had done uh, a bigger Kaizen event before. So they were starting maybe where some of you are starting, in a place that you didn't know much about it, and we did some training, and they, are doing their Ka they have already done their Kaizen events, and they are planning their next ones. So perhaps they might be in the same position that some of you are in from going from not really doing it to maybe wanting to try it out. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how they got to where they are. We're going to hear from pa Chris Bujak and Pam Vasilio to understand what does the Kaizen process look like. Then we're going to hear from Udgit Mehta and Sarah Warren from Seminole County in Florida. And actually, Sarah is not able to be with us. Fortunately, she just had her baby just a couple days ago, and uh, she's doing very well. But she was an instrumental part of co-leading their QI project at Seminole. But we're lucky to have Udget describe a lot about it since he was there through everything along with Sarah. We're also going to hear from Aaron Moulds from the Washington County Health Department in Oregon. These two practitioners, Udget and Aaron, are going to talk about their experience with Kaizen, tips, results, and what they personally found as the benefits to using this type of QI methodology. Then we're going to turn it back over to Chris and Pam to talk a little bit about how you get started with Kaizen. And then we have definitely reserved a good amount of time for any questions and discussion. So please just type in your questions as we go along. 
So at this point, you're probably wondering, okay, yeah, get on with it. What is it? <laughs> I'm going to show you what the program looks like. So here's us in the program. Um, I'm going to acquaint us to Bobsled team. We are all about doing quality QI work in a more rapid fashion. So you know that a Plan, Do, Check, Act or PDCA cycle can last just one cycle could last maybe 5, 8, 12 months. Technically, it could last forever, right? So this is a way we started this. We did the training in November and December, and then they started their Kaizen events. And since then, they've seen rapid improvement. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But that's the point of the program, to make measurable, rapid improvement using QI techniques to improve work processes. We did this with 10 health departments. We did a competitive process to select state, territorial, local, or ter tribal health departments. They all ended up being local health departments, as it, as it turned out. And we did training. We did personal QI coaching. And their personal, personal QI coach was also on site with them, co-leading them through their Kaizen event. And for those of you wondering how this program is structured, it is managed by NNPHI. If you have any questions, contact me, Lil Johnson. The training and expertise is provided by Continual Impact, which is Pam Bujak, Pam Facelio, and Chris Bujak. And we are, this entire program is funded by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation with Pamela Russo and Grace Gornflo is a representative on this project from Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. And I'm going to ask Grace, many of you are familiar with Grace Gornflo, so Grace, did you have anything to add? Thank you, Lil. Just very briefly, and in Pamela's stead, I just wanted to mention that the foundation continues to be committed to strengthening the efficiency and the effectiveness of public health agencies across the country. And as all of those of you on the phone know, quality improvement is a very critical element for health departments that are pursuing accreditation. And the Kaizen process is just a very effective process, not only to realize change, but also to really engage staff and get them hooked as you start moving towards a culture of quality improvement. And I love the bobsled picture <laughs> because what everyone on the phone is going to hear is that staff see transformation in front of their eyes. That week is all about rapid change. Um, so you have to hold on quickly and go. <laughs> and um, anyway, we've been very pleased with the progress of the sites and everything that, that we've learned also from Pam and Chris. And I really look forward to hearing Aaron and Ungit talk about their experiences. So thanks, Lil. Thank you, Grace. I couldn't agree more. Um, so let's take a look at what we look like without our uniforms on. Uh, this is a little bit about what the objectives of the program were, but in essence, it's really about strengthening the skills of QI leaders at health departments and investing in them so that they can invest in their health department, use an additional technique of QI, and use it for future projects. And in addition, it can also help to satisfy some of the FAB standards and measures. So I told you before we did, we started with training. And I'm going to talk just a little bit more about that right now. We are, we did uh, three days in November and three days in December of training in person with uh, Continual Impact with Pam and Chris. And we did all sorts of training, um, including identifying what kind of waste were involved in some processes and looked at ways to work with people better. It sounds so foundational, but I think this is a big component of some of the successes that we've seen in just making sure that people feel valued on a QI team or, 
or not on the QI team, but just part of a process that is being worked on through QI. And then we also did training on some of the techniques used in Kaizen, such as a waste and value analysis. And I'm pointing out this tell, show, do, recycle part because this is a big component of all of the training and coaching. We didn't just want to tell people, hey, this is, this is how you can do it. We wanted to tell people but then also show them and then have them practice it, have them do it, and then reuse it again so that they actually had some practice to instill some of these strengths and some of these skills. So there's the training piece of it. And then we also had the coaching side of it. Each of the 10 sites had a personalized QI coach, which was Chris Bujak or Pam Filicilio or Chris Shucker from Continual Impact. They worked with these sites before, and they were, of course, on site during the Kaizen event and after it. So you're probably wondering, okay, so what, did, what are some examples of some Kaizen projects that people did? Here are the 10 different sites project focus. So for instance, Three Rivers District Health Department worked on improving their shared drive, the, the computer system that holds their shared documents so they could help people or so they could set up a system that people could access and find files easier and more quickly. Another example is in Johnson County, Kansas, their, they wanted to improve their ordering of supplies process and make that more efficient. So you can catch actually all of these different sites as projects at the open forum next week if you have a chance to go. They'll be doing some oral sessions and some, some presentations through posters. And if you don't have a chance to go next week, all those materials are posted on the NNPHI website after the meeting. So get in touch with me or another staff member at NNPHI if, if you're not finding that. And lastly, I wanted to just highlight some of the accomplishments from this. In terms of training, uh, you see these, these arrows. The darker it is, the more results we have in currently. We did those two trainings, and after each of the trainings, we asked each participant, okay, what did you think you knew before you went through this training, and what do you know now? And so we've really increased their, the knowledge and skills that they've self-reported um, from 3.2 points on a 7-point scale. So we've really significantly shifted that up. In terms of applying the skills, each of the 10 sites have completed their Kaizen event somewhere between January and March. I want to highlight just one example, Taysville County, Illinois. This is actually the area that was devastated by the tornadoes, I want to say back in December or November. And they were working on improving their food inspection time, so they wanted to reduce it. Their target was 33%, and they actually reduced it all the way to 80%. So you can see that there's a significant change that can come about in a short amount of time with this investment in Kaizen. And lastly, we wanted to make sure that these tips were shared, and we are doing that through various different ways. And check us out at the Open Forum if you have the chance, and also look at us through Peach Kicks. And with that, I'm not going to talk a moment more. I'm going to turn it to Pam and Chris, who will be getting into, okay, what does Kaizen actually look like? Great. Thanks, Lil. Thank you all and welcome. Thank you. Welcome to uh, our session here. And we're so glad that you're calling in to, to learn more about Kaizen. So Kaizen really is a Japanese term, meaning simply change for the better. What we're going to talk about here is let's talk about the what of Kaizen, how you can use the Kaizen event process, and, and why we're using Kaizen to bring rapid change in public health. So let's get into this now. And as Lil had mentioned previously, if you do have a, a question or, or you need, need, need something answered, please feel free in the bottom left hand box to post a question. So what is Kaizen? Kaizen is, means different things to different people. Kaizen at the highest level is a principle. It's a way of life. It's a 
pursuit of ongoing perfection in all that you do. The second way Kaizen is applied is as an organization model. So you may have heard of Lean or Six Sigma or people using different types of, of improvement model. Kaizen is another umbrella term used for an improvement model. The, the third way, and this is how we apply Kaizen, is as a method. We use it as a special event. So it is a focused event around one particular work process to make the rapid change that we're going to talk about. Okay? So as I mentioned, it's, we select um, a process that really needs improvement, has a lot of waste, uh, a lot of inefficiencies, a lot of issues, defects, errors, um, long cycle time, frustration, has all that in the project, in the process. And through a series of activities in this process, we get the team together and we basically clip through every phase of the improvement cycle within a five day period. Okay? So let's compare and contrast a bit of a PDSA or PDCA. Will mentioned, and we were a little more generous, the typical PDCA project is six to eight months. Right? If you compare and contrast that to a Kaizen event, prior to the five-day uh, team event, you would have some pre-event activities. You would confirm the use of Kaizen and you would prepare. Prepare the team, prepare the resources, prepare the logistics, get ready for the event. That's a couple weeks span. And then you get and you perform the event, and that's typically five days. And I will say that five days is, is the norm. Five days is the norm. Some people try and do it in, in four 10-hour days. Um, some people try and do it in three days and then two days. Uh, the, the message is you want to get in and, and do it pretty efficiently and effectively. The, the longer you and the perform step, the more startup and shutdown time you have, the more the team loses the momentum. Uh, you have team just memory loss of what did we talk about last time, what did we decide. Uh, so we really use the Kaizen to get in the event for those five days and work through the problem without losing momentum. And then we, we close out a Kaizen after the event with the institutionalized, and we'll talk a bit more about that here in a moment, okay? Another compare and contrast here, how the, the improvement cycle, PDCA, is, is similar to Kaizen, is you're still going through all the improvement cycle steps. You're, you're still using the team. team. Team members are critical. I would say that they're even more critical in terms of their commitment with the Kaizen because you're essentially bringing them in a room and locking the door for five days. So you have to have their commitment. You have to have the knowledgeable expertise in the room to be able to quickly make decisions and understand. You are still going through problem solving. You would, we're just doing it uh, a little bit faster and a little bit more aggressively and, and sometimes thoroughly uh, because we're looking at everything all at once. A couple other things that make Kaizen different, right, is I mentioned the team commitment. But for Kaizen, you try to pick a process that is observable. So you can actually see it, uh, walk it, you can go out to it and touch it, feel it within that week time frame. You try to pick a process that you have the ability to actually go out and test within that week of the Kaizen. Okay. The other thing that's different as well, you can read it in the very last bullet here. As the facilitator, the event leader, you have to be very comfortable and competent with several improvement methods. So you have to be very comfortable moving from one topic to the next and keeping the team fully engaged and moving there with you. As an example, you've, you've just done a process map. And now the team's like, okay, what do we do next? And you have to be completely prepared and ready to take them into the waste evaluation, to take them into issue prioritization, to take them right into root cause analysis. You have to be very much on your game of keeping the team moving in those five days. Okay, so let's go through the four steps of Kaizen. Talk a little bit about what 
and how you do confirm. So confirm is essentially confirming that Kaizen is the right improvement tool. Right? There are, will be times where you might want to do uh, just a process mapping session, or you might want to do a root cause analysis on a problem. So there are times for Kaizen, and there are times not for Kaizen. So what you're doing in the first step with Confirm is making sure that, yes, we want to use Kaizen. Yes, I have support. Yes, I have um, a really clear goal and a starting point of what I'm trying to achieve, and I can measure success. So you're confirming that. Once you said, yep, we're going to do a Kaizen event, now you want to start preparing. Preparing for the event is really finalizing the goal and the measures. It's very important to make sure that you have the measures of success um, confirmed. Uh, also in this step, you may be getting additional process data. You might be baselining the process if you, don't, if you have not previously measured it. You're going around and confirming all of your team members, getting their commitment and their support from the leaders. You're also identifying at this time who's going to own this improvement once it's done. Once we make changes, as, Car as Bill mentioned, the Tazewell County food inspection, once we made the changes, who are we handing off these improvements to, to keep it alive, to keep it going on and on and on? So in the prepare step is when you really want to identify who is it? Who is my owner that's going to carry this through and, and keep the improvement going? After that, you've got the, the communications, and we don't want to minimize this. We, we use stakeholder analysis, we use communication strategies, we really start thinking about each team member, each stakeholder as an individual, as a group, uh, and really look at where are they on the change curve? Are they excited and ready to come into this event and make change? Are they resisting and fighting this? Um, and what can I do to prepare each individual team member or stakeholder that's going to be in the room or not in the room to really make a successful event happen. And lastly, your logistics, right? You need to get everything on the wall. You're going to use a lot of wall space in a Kaizen event. You need to make sure you have a room that has a lot of wall space and you have tape and you have flip charts and markers. Um, food, in this program we provided food <laughs> to keep everyone in the room um, and, and energized and happy. So that's all kind of some of the things at the high level you would do to prepare for a Kaizen event. Okay. So now the day has come. You're ready to get, in, get into the room and perform your event. Okay. So you know your project, you have your goal, you have your team members, you've got everyone ready. You bring them in and you focus the team. So again, you're going to go back to your, your starting point, your vision and your goal statement and your measures, and you're going to confirm that that is truly what you're going after. And then you're going to start gathering process data. You're going to, if you have not mapped out the process, you may do the value stream map. You may do sub-process maps. Um, some folks use spaghetti diagrams, which is a very visual um, diagram to follow the process step by step. You're gathering data and understanding of the process. At the same time, you're identifying all the issues and the waste and all the things that are going wrong in that process. Okay? After you have that, you're going to then prioritize the issues. And you're going to prioritize those issues against the goal. You're always trying to make change against that goal. And when you're running a Kaizen event, it's very important as, your, as the leader or the facilitator to keep questioning, will this impact the goal? Will this impact the goal? Will this impact the goal? Right? Now you have the important prioritized issues. Uh, you may have also done a waste and a value analysis to help you confirm that, yes, I have the right prioritized issue. I'm going to take those issues and I'm going to do a bit of root cause. I'm going to ask the five whys. I'm going to try and get a deeper understanding of those issues. And you might hear shortly from Udgit or Aaron how in our events, we had preconceived issues. We had preconceived solutions. And when we took them through this process and followed with rigor and discipline the root cause analysis, we came up with deeper solutions and deeper understandings of the issues. So in day two, you're, you're going through all that root cause. 
you're identifying solutions that can go fix that problem, that can go fix your goal. Day three, you will now pull it back together into a future state process map. So what's the new world look like? And what are those new solutions, job aids, templates, um, website changes, different things that I need to create in order to make the future come to fruition? That's when you start in day three. In day three, once you've started creating some of that material, some of that, those solutions, you're going to go out to wherever the process is being run, and you're going to do a bit of test. You may test the entire end-to-end -end process. You may test um, a form. It really will vary. And what you're trying to do is really test and learn so that you have a solid process with a solid solution that will fix your problem. Day four, you continue to develop those solutions, to develop those tests, and learn from those tests, and modify so that you have the right material. Day four, you start building your training material. You may even be getting into training on day four or day five. Out of the 10 Kaizen events that we just finished, we had one that did training on Friday morning, and we went live on Monday the day of that following week. Okay. Day five, you've made it. It's a long week. <laughs> Grace mentioned it. Lil mentioned it. Got to hold on to that bobsled because you're rolling. <laughs> right? Now you're at the point where I, I think I have most of my solutions developed. I've got my training material going, and I want to do a little pilot test. I want to see if this end-to-end -end process, the future process, can really be made real. Okay? Through those, that test, you're going to measure. Right? So. Uh, Lil mentioned Tazewell County. We wanted to take out 33% of their administrative time around the food inspection process. We, we did our test. We did our waste evaluation, and it said we could take out 69% versus our goal of 33. Right, so that was our measure of right at day five. She mentioned just a few moments ago, now that we're in May, they're actually achieving 80% reduction in that time. But in day five, you still want to get a little bit measure going to hand off to the process owner and get the team really owning and understanding of the measures as well as the process. Okay, so that's the five-day event. You've just made it. You survived. The team went through a roller coaster, as some people have called it, <laughs> emotionally and and and. As a team, it's, it's quite, sometimes emotional. Sometimes there's a lot of change going on for you personally or having to accept the change that the future will bring. But you made it. Now, post the event, there might be a couple of things that need to get finished that you didn't quite finish. Again, the objective is in the five-day Kaizen, in the perform step of Kaizen, you want to accomplish absolutely everything you can possibly accomplish so that you don't have a lot of leftover activities. But you may. You still want to come out and communicate the results of the event. Communicate the new process. Let people know how you're going to how we're going to live in this new world, what the new world looks like. And when when we're turning the button on and going live if we have not. At this point you're you're if you have not already in the event, you're tra transferring the responsibility for the ongoing imp improvement, for the ongoing measure. Uh, to the process owner and to the team, the team that runs that, that job. And lastly, you want to share your success. You want to replicate this in maybe other sites, or you want to take learnings and directions from this event to make the next one even better. So that's the, the four steps of, of Kaizen. A little bit more on institutionalized, which is the very end. Inside the event, we mentioned you're working on creating the process, you're working on the training and teaching. Uh, but what comes after is you can see step four and five. So let's talk a little bit more about step four, which is the ongoing continual improvement. And we call this the CIS. And what you'll see is a happy process owner <laughs> looking at one of her, her issues that was identified by a team member. And this CIS is a if you're familiar with a fishbone, it's a team fishbone 
on the top right hand side, you'll see their measures. So they're tracking the, the measures that were identified in the event ongoing. So in this case, every month, she, she will collect data and plot her, her new graph to see and visually show how that process is going. Is it alive? Is it functioning well? Are we meeting the target as we have planned? Around the, the bones or the categories where you see the yellow and the blue post-its, those are the steps of the process. And that's where we encourage the team members to bring up anything that happened throughout the day, throughout the week. So what issues, what problems came up that I need help with? What cool idea or solution came up that I want to share? Right? And so this is a very visible, on the wall, basic team meeting type of approach where you have the team put their ideas, their issues up. What happens then is routinely, and in this case, they are meeting um, every other week, and they go through how are we doing with our measure? What new issues have you as team members encountered? And what happens is, Someone will bring up an issue and the person next to them will say, hey, I had that problem last week. And you know what? Here's how I addressed it. And you immediately have some sharing and some learning and some best practice replication. Okay, so that's, in a nutshell, what a continu continual improvement system can get you. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to Chris. Okay. Hello, everybody. I uh, was kind of monitoring some of the uh, questions that are uh, kind of appearing on the chat board. Really good questions. We'll see if we can uh, pick those up at the end. Um, there was a couple of them here uh, just before kind of I forget and, and relevant to, to some of the, the information that Pam covered. Got a couple of thoughts. Uh, a couple of them dealt with you know, what were the origins of Kaizen, uh, how does it fit with some of the other things like PDSA and uh, Lean Six Sigma, things like that. Um, origin is an interesting uh, question. You get you know, spirited debate around, you know, where did Kaizen come from? You can get a camp that, you know, defines it as a unique uh, You can get another spirited uh, group uh, that says it's basically an offshoot of uh, uh, Deming and Schuert. Um, and then there's another interesting one. It's covered under a paper, I believe, uh, The Roots of Lean, which basically say it's an offshoot of a program called Training Within Industry uh, that was about a program in World War II, believe it or not. So uh, I'll leave that one up to you in terms of, you know, kind of what camp you put yourself in in terms of where this comes from. Suffice it to say, though, the important point here is not a history lesson. The important point here is um, it, we feel that, that Kaizen um, is a wonderful method uh, that you can put as, you know, if you have a mature, uh, you know, Lean Six Sigma or Lean program, it uh, can be an important uh, method in there, particularly for a certain kind of project. Uh, similarly, uh, if you have a, a kind of a mature or ongoing uh, PDSA, QI, uh, you know, kind of initiative, again, uh, there really isn't any kind of conflict, uh, you know, that you really have to deal with. Um, it's more a matter of, uh, you know, a certain kind of project and uh, a certain methodology for enabling you to get uh, speed, uh, to get through all of the it's very action-oriented, so you can get through all the steps of the improvement cycle and get yourself some results. And also, if you think about it, a little bit to Pam's point, and probably at the end of this, we'll get into this issue about, oh, my goodness, you know, how do I get uh, all these people in a room, you know, for, for five days kind of thing. You actually think about it. Uh, if you ever run some numbers around, uh, you know, if I took all these people and we had all these meetings over the period of six months, you know, which are you better off doing? Uh, you better off trying to get, you know, immediate focus and get the results done, um, you know, or a longer thing. Um, and of course, there, there there is a challenge around kind of getting the resources focused, particularly as you get into some smaller organizations. So maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. What I wanted to do though is wanted to switch gears here a little bit. Um, this is a very kind of, uh, right, you talk about Kaizen and I have a goal and I have measures and I have targets um, and we're going to look for, for waste and we're going to eliminate it. Um, and we're going we're to have very specific measurable, um, you know, outcomes. There are a lot of things uh, that you may like a lot um, from Kaizen and introducing Kaizen dealing with the culture of the organization. 
the reason that I say that is uh, a simple thing, uh, which is in high-performing organizations, people are the key element. They're kind of the center of it. Uh, you know, our colleague over here, Ray Vitale, always refers to as people being the heart, head, sinew, muscle of high-performing organizations. You are trying to get people in your organization engaged, enabled, um, and, and one way to help supercharge kind of that performance, so to speak, is by getting uh, more people engaged. Um, and Kaizen helps you out uh, a lot in that. I'll explain why in a second. One of the reasons why on this particular slide is that it gives you, uh, gives them the opportunity to get engaged. It gives them a setting, it gives them a process to follow, and it gives them some skills that help them out in terms of actually uh, getting engaged. So one of the things that kind of collateral to the actual result that you get out of your five-day event is uh, Kaizen, we feel, is a very effective supercharger for, for uh, high-performing, improving organizations. Uh, why? You know, what's some of the basis behind that? And there's, right, there's all kinds of, if you've ever studied this kind of thing, there's all kinds of um, analyses. There's, there's some fairly strong opinions and views out there as far as why people do what they do. Uh, you know, what makes me want to get engaged? What makes me want to, you know, participate in things? Just a couple of, of um, possibilities for you. Uh, one is from, uh, uh, from some of the University of Chicago. Uh, when they looked at basically kind of why people uh, reported that what, you know, this team that they were a part of, what they found satisfying. If you look at it, it's interesting. Clear objective, uh, concentration, um, you know, immediate feedback on progress, meaning, you know, I went out and did something, I got some learning, I tested it, I learned it, I got some action out of it, and a sense of challenge, like a stretch objective kind of thing. Well, if you think about it, the things that are part of Kaizen are, are basically line up pretty well with that. Um, similarly, and there's different versions of this, some people uh, talk about uh, a guy back then about uh, Maslow, talk about Maslow's hierarchy. Here's another version of it from two guys by the name of Powers and Glazer. Basically deal with, okay, um, if I want to get engaged in something, if, if I want to um, uh, feel fulfilled, what do I want to try to get out of it? One is survival. One of the things that Kaizen helps you do is it helps the organization become more efficient, more effective, better outcomes um, in relatively quick fashion that helps the survival of the organization. Um, one of the things that's often the case is Kaizen uh, promotes teamwork, uh, people talking to one another for the first time, developing relationships for the first time, uh, feeling like they're part of a Kaizen team. They'll, they'll own it going forward. Um, power is not so much power as much as it is uh, they get a chance to influence their area, uh, their work process. They can make a change there in rapid fashion. Um, freedom is more about creativity. People get a chance to express their creativity. They're moving things around. They're doing things, uh, whether it's equipment, whether it's redesigning forms or whatever. And lastly, it's okay in a Kaizen event to have fun. So lots of times um, in Kaizen you get those kinds of things, it's a very action orientated, you know, kind of team based uh, method. Uh, people resonate to it. If you look at the slide that I'm going to show now, um, these are not things that are uncommon, nor are the things that we made up in the, in the events that uh, the folks conducted. You find these kinds of things. I mean, take, for example, uh, you know, we solved the 16 year old problem in five days. Or what about the one I have much more capability than people realize but feel looked down on because I'm just an operator? Kaizen changed that. So there's a lot of power there in terms of, um, you know, what it means to the individual, to the teams, to the people that are out there, um, and kind of collateral to the actual result of the event, uh, there's a lot of good things coming, coming out of the event. So just kind of draw closure to this first thing around Kaizen. And over to Hudgit and to uh, Aaron. Um, in terms of building that culture, um, you know, we've found that the things that are here on the slide in blue are the kinds of things that are critical to doing that, um, people being the centerpiece of it. 
uh, leadership and leadership support, having a focus on what you're really trying to do and concentration on it, uh, learning along the way, um, implementing well, and, and uh, the improvement method. And, and to, to some degree, Kaizen is very much about this, very much a team-based people uh, you know, kind of method. Uh, does require kind of immediate leadership support because you're making actions really quick. Uh, you are very focused. You're looking at a number of different methods in a Kaizen event. Uh, you're implementing, learning, and putting it in place in the one week. Um, so think about it a little bit. Um, very uh, supportive of high-performing organizations and trying to do um, improvement. So other than that, uh, we'll close back with, with some of the questions. If we can turn this thing over um, to Udgit first. Yeah, there, Udgit. Yes, I'm out here. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Um, let me get my slideshows up. Sorry. Hi, my name is Udgit Maytel. I'm from the Florida Department of Health in Seminole County, and um, really wanted to go over what we did at the Seminole County Health Department in Kaizen. It was a very informative, um, very interesting QI um, process. And my slideshow here is how we use Kaizen currently in the health department. Um, in improving the requisition process in our purchasing, we noticed our goal statement was to reduce the transactional cost of goods and services through My Florida Marketplace. Um, by doing this, we identified some areas of improvements. Um, and many organizations through procurement, uh, we could not see, we didn't have standardized job aids. Um, we did not have the approval flow for um, expediting purchases were cumbersome. Um, we did not have established of roles and responsibilities. Um, and the big thing in Kaizen that we learned is we didn't have any performance measurements. Um, after we did our five-day Kaizen event, um, we were able to create measurements to measure our success, one, measure what we could improve, continue improvement, because that's what Kaizen is about, is how to continue to improve. So those are the few things that we notice in um, improving our requisition process. And our goal setting that we did was 75% 70, or higher purchase request forms submitted by our program managers to be correct and complete. That was one of our measurements. 90% of our submitted requisitions to Tallahassee State Office by our health department uh, from the business office to be correct and complete. Demonstrate a minimum of $4,500 negotiated savings per quarter and reduce total employee time by 25% from our January 2014 waste analysis estimating. So by creating the Kaizen and going through the Kaizen, we were able to get these measurements that would help us quickly go through. And um, as I will discuss in a few minutes about what we did in our exact measurement, I just wanted to go over our data, um, Kaizen daily use, um, what we did every day because as Pam and Chris were explaining that it's a five-day process and just what do you do for five days? When we went through the training, we were very, very interested in what we do each day. And when, even when we started, the team came together and did not know what we actually did on each of the days. So in day one, we, what we did is we created the goal. Um, we came as a team, and I had five people on the team, and we created a goal um, to reduce transactional costs. That was the day first. Um, day two, we reviewed and completed our waste analysis. Um, waste value analysis and identified and prioritized our issues using the two by two ranking matrix. And day three, we had a root cause and effect analysis to determine what areas of our process needed to be fixed. And day four, we asked several program reps to test our new process. So we had different members from our health department programs come here and test our new process. How do they like it? And we took some managers from different departments and didn't give them any pre. Um, training or anything, we just called them in and they looked at our process and see how it was. And then day five, to close out the whole thing, we reported out to all our managers and our executive team and what we achieved in this five days and how what was our next steps in training people. Um, and as you can see, the value is the customer recognizes the valuable and willing to pay for. It changes the product and information, and is it done the first done the done first time? So that was what we how we're using Kaizen right now. And my next slide, um, which came to the big thing, is what, what measurements did we have? And this is what we have so far gotten out of our um, Kaizen process. And as we have discussed in earlier slides, it is a continued improvement process. So we are continuously improving on these improvements. But right now, 96% of our amount of quality submitted requisitions to Tallahassee in April. 
Um, prior to that, in March, we had 82%, and in February, it was 90%. So we're increasing our quality of what we submit to Tallahassee. Instead of going back and forth and wasting time and getting the correct forms, we're pretty much on target with our forms. 50% um, of our quality submitted forms are done to the business office from our programs. Before, we didn't have a measurement. So we couldn't measure, but we knew we were going back and forth with the programs. Well, now we have a measurement, and we're noticing 50%, 56% of them are coming in correctly. So we're improving that process. Um, process time, as you can see here, we had a 49% improvement in our process time for our requisitions. Our work content was 46% improvement. Um, we basically brought down the amount of minutes that we use in each of our processes. Under the savings goal, our sa annual savings goal was $28,000 um, as a health department. It's not a big chunk of change, but this was hard savings. Um, by doing this new process and by quoting out and getting the right job aids and the right forms done, um, just in our quarter that we had done, which was um, we started in January through March, we had saved $7,600. So it was right on target of hitting our $28,000 or even going more. Uh, Part of our Kaizen event thing was to create new vendor lists, and in the last quarter we created new, three new vendors. Um, as you can see here, we have a few graphs. Um, first graph was our Dixie Printing, which is our printing um, person that we have in our local area. By creating a Kaizen event and creating um, approaches and everything, I was able to negotiate better pricing with these printers. Um, this is showing one of our savings that we had with our printer. Um, and the other thing is basically about our study of request. Basically, it showed that the Kaizen event showed how we analysis time between supervisors, um, different levels of approvals, and that kind of stuff. So from what I can explain in the Kaizen that we did in our health department, it was all about creating job aids, creating us roles and responsibilities of each person, um, getting a good process flow. And what we have noticed and the team has noticed is that we're continuously improving on all the all the things that we've done, and it's a continual improvement. So we got a, we have gotten a lot of benefit out of it. The organization is starting to go forward with this, and the rest of our health department. Um, I would like to pass it on to Erin Moles that will discuss her what she did in her health department. Thank you. Um, can you guys hear me all right? Sure, can. Thank you. So hi, my name is Erin Moltz, and I'm going to talk a little bit about our Kaizen event um, in Washington County, Oregon that was held the week of February 10th through the 14th. So to give you a little background, Washington County is one of the three counties making up the Portland metropolitan area in Oregon, located west of Portland, and the county population is about 530,000. So I see some of you are asking about the size of the health departments. Um, and we, our public health division has a little over 100 employees. So our event was focused on improving the child care facility inspection process. Um, and this is a picture of our team made up of the environmental health supervisor, three environmental health specialists, a support staff um, in the environmental health program, and the support unit supervisor and me. Um, and we cleverly named our project What to Expect When You're Inspected. Um, so I'll get started talking a little bit about um, our event and give you an overview. So um, in Oregon, child care facilities can choose to hire a private inspector instead of using the local health department for child care facility sanitation inspections. And the environmental health program identified this project to do a Kaizen event um, because there was a low number of child care facilities choosing to hire Washington County Environmental Health for inspection services. And we really saw this as a missed opportunity for public health, um, which can ensure high quality inspections and kind of has a public health infrastructure to provide really comprehensive high quality um, services. So in addition to that issue, there was also kind of a lack of clarity in the process for child care facility inspections because they are conducted um, less often than other inspections in the environmental health program. And this was resulting in some issues with scheduling and timeliness. So prior to the event, um, in, the, in the preparation stages that um, Pam talked about, we conducted a customer satisfaction survey process to identify key issues related to what factors influence um, customers' decisions about who to hire for inspection services, 
and their level of satisfaction in the past um, for factors related to timely, timeliness and rapport and relationship to environmental health program staff, cost, and overall quality. So the aim of the project was to decrease the overall cost of providing child care facility inspections, improve the timeliness of the inspection service, and improve the rapport between environmental health program staff and the customers, including the knowledge provided by the environmental health specialist that can help um, customers improve their service. So we um, went through the Kaizen event process that was described by Chris and Pam, um, and this is a picture of our team developing our new process map. And we went through all the event steps described, focusing the team, gathering data and information, um, evaluating and solving the problem through process mapping and root cause analysis and waste and value analysis. And this, um, this process led to the implementation of these six um, improvements based on our improvement hypothesis that we came up with through the week. So our improvement hypothesis focused in four main areas. The first was that if we reduce incorrect and incomplete inspection applications that were coming in using job aids, um, job aids and website tools, if we introduce a scheduling and preparedness call done by the environmental health specialist, introduce a five-day scheduling window and eliminate the redundant log and data entry systems we identified, then our overall costs to providing inspections should be reduced by 25%. And that was calculated through waste analysis processes. The second component to our, our hypothesis was if we identify key areas of the process that impact cost and timeliness and quality and create standardized work and job aids so they're done consistently and efficiently um, and policies to help clarify areas where amb ambiguity exists, then consistency will improve across our, um, all the environmental health specialists and overall quality of service will improve because consistent best practices will be used. The third component of our hypothesis was if we introduced the concept of setting a five-day um, scheduling window with the customer for the inspection, um, then the customer will be pleased to have confirmation that their application was received um, and that the inspection is on our schedule and we've made an agreed commitment with them. And that also gave us a clear target for a performance measure which will give us feedback and enable us to further improve as we, as we continue to implement this. And the fourth part of our hypothesis was if we um, clarify for ourselves and the customer that our purpose um, to inspection includes both regulatory purposes but also helping the customer improve. And if we focus on enhancing our abilities to relate to customers and deliver positive and challenging feedback in an effective manner, then better problem-solving discussions will be created, more improvements, less remediation will result, um, and the customer will kind of see us as a more valued partner. So for each of these six improvements listed, um, a test was conducted to evaluate the improvement and determine the level of success. So for example, the um, new prep and scheduling call that was done by the environmental health specialist was tested out with two actual customers. So we tested out all of these and it allowed us to evaluate the effectiveness of each of the improvements, make changes, and then actually formally implement all of them within the five-day period. So the impact of um, our Kaizen event is being measured and tracked in three main ways. Um, and these measures are being included in our performance management system that's going live on July 1st. So part of our performance management system that we um, have been developing for um, across our health department. So the first way is the impact on customer satisfaction is being measured through the use of individual visit satisfaction surveys um, via SurveyMonkey that will be summarized quarterly. And our goal is to improve 20% um, from our baseline by next July, July 1st, 2015. Improvements in timeliness are being measured through the percent of inspections performed to the agreed five-day um, scheduling window. And that will be sum summarized quarterly from the environmental health database and the goal is to have less than or equal to one per quarter that's not performed to that agreed time commitment. 
And then the impact on cost to conduct the inspection is being measured through the cumul cumulative annual savings in labor and expenses, and we're um, looking at that annually. And the target total savings is $8,000 for 2014 based on that 25% reduction in overall um, labor and cost reduction and also um, increasing the number of inspections provided. Um, so now I'll pass it um, back over to Udgit to talk a little bit more about the benefits of the process. Thank you, Erin. Um, so I wanted to go over the Kaizen benefits that we had our um, Department of Health. Yeah, let me get the slide. Um, it was myself, myself, Udgit Mehta, and Sarah Warren, and as um, Lil had said in the beginning, Sarah Warren is out today, but. Um, she was our QI leader, and I was the process owner in this um, quality improvement project um, that we did with Kaizen for our purchasing procurement office. Um, as a QI leader, learning the Kaizen process gave me a lot of confidence in identifying the rapid change improvement ideas. As Pam and Chris had said before, it's it's about rapid rapid change. It's not going to be a six eight month process, an eight month process. It's going to be a five day process, and then you continue improving it. Um, Kaizen also gave me um, valuable tools to help me quickly focus a team by ensuring participant engagement. So that was the key. Um, I saw some questions earlier regarding um, how do you get people engaged um, in, a, in a room for five days, and that was one of my biggest concerns. But with the tools that Kaizen gives you and getting people engaged and getting them interested and getting them to do the correct, correct processes and getting the job aids done right then and there, not waiting and not coming back, it was really beneficial for us. Um, the benefits to Kaizen team, for our team, was increased financial accountability, especially through the procurement, um, reduction of transactional costs and services procured through My Florida Marketplace, which is our e-procurement system in the state of Florida. Um, benefits to the Seminole County Health Department was, um, as all agencies are looking at reducing costs and looking at um, going to client, client services, we were able to pull some of our staff that were doing this in the programs and get them back and seeing clients and streamlining our procurement process. So it was very beneficial. And benefits to the in, impact stakeholders were the continued operational availability of our organization, timely payment of goods and services, um, rendering for vendors with the state of Florida, and reduction of state office represents time who must review and correct errors on submitted purchase order. Basically, it, it streamlined the process. Um, it was a very beneficial thing just to get a process in place, um, not just do it, but actually have a way of doing it, and, and getting the roles and responsibilities laid out and so everyone understands it's just not one or two people. Um, so that was the benefits that we had at the um, Department of Health in Seminole County, which is near Orlando, Florida. So we are not in Orlando, but we're right outside Orlando. So our health department is a pretty medium-sized health department. So we were able to get people to come out into our office, and most of it was out of the business office, but we had some representatives out of the different departments to help us go through this process. I do appreciate you guys listening to our um, presentation here, and I'm going to pass it over to Erin. Thank you, Udge. Um So I'm just going to talk a little bit about the benefits um, of participating for me and um, the team and our stakeholders. Um, so participating in this program was very beneficial for my uh, personal and career growth as the QI coordinator at Washington County Public Health. Um, my role at Washington County includes facilitation of other processes related to accreditation and community health improvement planning and strategic planning. So this program was very helpful for me to learn um, team management techniques, uh, facilitation methods, um, and then also how to conduct a comprehensive quality improvement process beginning to end. Um, and having the training and then the in-person coaching was a helpful model for me to feel comfortable going through the entire uh, Kaizen event process and the, the prep and the follow-up. Um, I think the, one of the most effective things about the Kaizen process is how well each tool and method flows into the next tool and really builds on um, the, the process. And this program um, really helped our team uh, see how well that process can work. And I think everyone on our team was really surprised on how much progress was really made in the five days and how complete the process is after five days, um, including full implementation of the improvements and testing them out and reporting out and communicating our results to um, others at our health department. Um, 
one tip I think is the amount of improvement possible um, within those five days really depends on the preparation to gather as much background information um, and data beforehand um, so, so your team can really hit the ground running and make the improvements within the five days. Um, a lot of those prep stages that Pam was talking about earlier. Um, and we did that with the customer satisfaction survey results and other data collection. Um, and I think that's a, a key piece of this is having as much background information about your uh, process as possible. Um, but I think that's the biggest difference between Kaizen and other QI methodologies, how significant amount of change you can make in such a short period of time. Um, to talk about the team a little bit, I think the environmental health team is benefiting from the new standardized and improved process um, with less ambiguity and um, more prepared customers um, with the new uh, improvements that were put in place. Um, and I think this also has sparked ideas for improvements in other processes across the environmental health program. Um, we, re we focused on this project as kind of a pilot project to then use this process across our health department. So it was very beneficial to have the formal training and coaching, um, and now we're looking at where we can apply it to other areas. Um, one of the main things that was helpful for me and our team was having a lot of leadership support and engagement throughout the process. Um, we had the environmental health supervisor on our team for the week, and we had our public health division um, director come in midweek and hear about our progress. And then at the end of the week, we reported out to supervisors from uh, most of the other public health program areas. The public health division director was there and staff from across the division. And I think that reporting out process is very beneficial to the whole team and gave us a lot of ownership over the process um, and kind of pulled everything together well and got a lot of support from, from leadership. Um, and then I think the child care facility owners are benefiting from the improved process and the focus on improved relationships and r rapport between them and the staff. Um, and hopefully we'll see that as our performance measures are tracked um, starting next month. So now I'll turn it back over to Pam or Chris. Okay. Let's see if we can get you through uh, one more topic and then see if we can get some time in here for some questions and things like that. Let's just talk for a little bit around uh, just kind of getting started uh, if you're interested in, in such a thing. Um, and getting started with kind of this slide is probably not a big surprise. You could, you could probably use the same slide for a number of different things. Um, here's a couple of thoughts uh, and some details around this. Um, you are looking to identify um, some kinds of event leaders. Uh, now, I think somebody even asked a question in there uh, around, do you need somebody uh, you know, who's been trained up to do this? And, and, and actually, uh, the slide earlier Pam showed you is uh, you, know, you could reduce Kaizen down to literally Kaizen that I do by myself, on myself, in my own little workspace. So I can be my own little Kaizen leader for my own space. For what we're talking about here, where you're literally trying to get an event together uh, with a group of people in a team um, in a short duration and make you know, measurable, tangible change and, and roll it out. No, we, we do recommend that, that you, know, you, you have somebody that, that has had the advantage of getting, getting trained up um, and has some interest in, in doing the job as well. We've got a couple slides here to talk about that. Um, also, uh, you know, next step up is identifying some Kaizen appropriate events. Uh, Pam talked earlier around, yep, there's some things that are inappropriate for a Kaizen event. You know, th say, for example, something uh, that is purely a uh, change management, purely a personnel issue. Well, you're, you're not going to want to do a Kaizen event on purely a personnel issue. Uh, likewise, if something literally is so large uh, that you can't get your arms around it, you can't get uh, work process observations, you can't get uh, you know, the process itself is so long, you're going to want to break that up into pieces. Uh, another tool that's, you know, kind of taught as part of this uh, that helps out is actually value stream mapping um, that helps you kind of find what is the right individual area that you want to get yourself into and run a Kaizen event against it. Uh, yep, next thing is to get some good um, uh, training and coaching. Uh, if in another slide or so, we're going to show you kind of some of the things and issues um, that you uh, 
uh, you know, you want to be trained up in the kinds of things as an event leader uh, that you're going to want to uh, be skilled at. So you want to get yourself some some training and coaching. Uh, and then get out and, and another stuff silly is start running some events. Uh, the first couple, it helps if you've got somebody who uh, is a coach or has done it before, um, so you can kind of put it together and um, be successful the first time. Um, and then it's it's practice makes perfect kind of thing. You want to keep getting out there and, and running events. And lastly, the thing to think about is make it part of uh, your annual improvement plan. You know, literally uh, that you're targeting work process improvements as part of your annual improvement plan and, and uh, using uh, Kaizen as part of the improvement methodology. So some, some steps to consider in terms of uh, kind of getting going. Um, for, the, for the event leader themselves, uh, you know, what's an event leader's role like? Um, here's some thoughts for you. Uh, one is it's part educational. Uh, not only for yourself, because it's a it's a continual learning kind of thing. You can keep applying as you learn more techniques around mistake proofing and things like that. You can bring them into a Kaizen event and deploy them. Uh, but it's also educating others. Uh, the members who have uh, participated in an event pick up a little bit of education around things like mapping and root cause problem solving. Um, you're also going to uh, work with leadership in identifying and confirming Kaizen events, the first couple of steps that Pam was talking about. There's also a bunch of uh, learnings that people go through in the role in terms of the change management. A lot of times we talk about uh, Kaizen has, has certain little techniques and they're kind of hardwired in there that help you get through uh, change management. So if you have a potential change management issue, uh, part of the event leader's role may be doing a little stakeholder analysis. Uh, certainly there are a number of communication tools that occur during the week and before the event and after the event uh, that basically um, help the stakeholders understand the why are we making the change, what's the change, having them participate in the change, um, certainly perform the event. Uh, also the handoff, the smooth handoff of between the event team and the supervisor, the process owner, the whoever is going to own the improvement going forward. And lastly, one of the roles of the Kaizen event leader is also to try to share, learn, and replicate into other areas these kinds of things. So it's a really cool role uh, if you can if you can kind of uh, get trained up and and be a really good uh, Kaizen event leader. Uh, it really develops a lot of skills for you. Um, if you go to uh, kind of what are some of the, the skills and knowledge and things like that uh, that you know an event leader picks up or are you looking for? It's things like Pam mentioned. Uh, you know, there's commands of various uh, improvement techniques, waste analysis, uh, problem solving, mapping, uh, standardized work creation, um, training materials, mistake proofing, Kanban, all those kinds of things. Uh, you know, you can deploy during a during an event. Um, you're looking for 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 people who um, have the desire to keep learning and trying things. Uh, Kaizen is a very kind of application uh, intensive uh, type of thing. Uh, you're looking for people that have a, a desire to kind of share with others, share knowledge, develop others. Uh, people that are interested in using data to look for. Um, opportunities and also look for the root causes uh, to things. I also looking for people that um, uh, believe in people, believe in team-based solutions, are good at working with others um, in terms of motivating them, building relationships, um, and also giving them feedback. So again, a, a, a challenging role, but, but uh, really a, a lot of developmental and, and growth opportunity there in the in kind of the Kaizen event leader role. Um, uh, lastly, we're not going to go kind of go through all the individual things of these. There's an opportunity for a whole lot of continued learning for people that you know run the events. Um, there's a number of um, specific techniques and tools that are used within a Kaizen event. I mean, not every event you use every single one of these kinds of things, but it gives you a little flavor for the kinds of things that go on. Anything from uh, communication skills. Uh, to, to uh, goal setting and focusing skills, to analysis skills, um, to, to development of materials, uh, you know, whether they all be mistake proof or, or uh, whatever. So lots and lots and lots of opportunities for continued learning um, and application for the Kaizen event leaders. 
other than that, uh, you know, our basic view is uh, uh, we're really obviously uh, fans of Kaizen um, as a method. Uh, we, leave, we believe it's a really powerful one um, for uh, quick improvements, very tangible improvements, and also uh, ones that are powerful in terms of their cultural impact to the organization. Uh, so, yeah, uh, if you can't, uh, you know, get trained up, skilled at using the methodology, get some coaching and help, um, grab a prop, grab yourself a team, um, and give it a shot, and, and make it kind of part of your, your high-performing culture. So let me, uh, let me pause here. Uh, we, we do have the, the last slide here, um, which is, you know, kind of there's other ways to get some more information. So if you have questions that don't get answered, uh, you know, please, any of us, uh, you know, uh, Aaron, Udgit, M, uh, Jennifer, Lil, uh, at NNPHI. Uh, there's also plenty of Kaizen sessions at the upcoming open forum meeting. Uh, you should also see details around each one of the 10 Kaizen events that were run as part of this program in PH Kicks here uh, that are being submitted. So lots of opportunities to get some more information. But why don't we uh, why don't we kind of turn over to uh, some of the questions that are out there? Yes. Um, Hi everyone. This is Lil again. Thank you all so much. I'm going to jump right into the questions as you have a lot. So as Chris mentioned, you know there are a lot of ways to get trained specifically right here talking with NNPHI, continual impact, and especially the 10 sites that have done this. And I know that there are more out there. I don't know if Chris or Pam, you have a general sense of how many more people are using Kaizen. But one question that came in is, what's an inexpensive route to get trained in Kaizen? Do you have any thoughts on that? It, it, it's going to uh, depend a little bit around um, what your starting point, meaning as, as an organization, as an individual, because um, that depends upon how much you know skill training you're going to want to get yourself into. Um, the the second thing you want to do is again the strong recommendation is you want to you you want to in order to become good at this this is this fits in this category of you want to learn it uh, you want to see some examples of it um, and it really helps if you can get somebody to kind of help you through it the, the, the first time. So look for things um, that fit in that kind of category. So in some cases there are programs like this, you know, that, that Robert Wood Johnson and NNPHI sponsored. Um, there are, there are uh, you know, other folks out there that will help you, you know, kind of directly set up a little program for you. Um, if you're a little bit maybe larger organization. Um, the, the thing that uh, sometimes people have struggled with a bit uh, is the, you know, read the book and go out and do it kind of thing. Um, not that there's anything wrong with books, not that there's anything wrong with, you know, kind of reading. Uh, it's just there's a, there's a lot that goes on inside the Kaizen event depending upon, again, you know, what your starting point is. You want to be a little bit careful of that. Thanks, Chris. And from NNPHI, Lil, are you there? Hey, Lil, we lost you. Uh, okay, uh, Lil just sent a text note that she lost the connection, so we're going to keep going on. And there was a couple of questions out there um, dealing with, uh, you know, kind of things like the, uh, uh, you know, kind of the five days of the process, and you know, can I get folks to, you know, to participate in that kind of time frame? As Pam said earlier, um, it, it helps having that kind of concentrated uh, effort. It actually helps both efficiency and effectiveness. Um, sometimes you can split an event up um, so that you know you're kind of capturing the first uh, kind of the problem solving phase, and then you can get the action phase a little bit later when when uh, you know you can kind of get them back together again. Um, 
But again, what we try to do is kind of get them together um, and see if we can get through it. A couple other tips for you. Uh, if you're going to try to do the five day, think about your day. Take a long lunch each day for the team members to go do some multitasking or work on their day job. Think about your starting up later in the morning um, or ending earlier in the afternoon to give them a little bit of time each day to keep their day job going. Also think about when you have a team, you don't need every person in the event. So you have, maybe you have five inspectors uh, in Aaron's uh, child care facility inspections. Maybe you bring one or two inspectors to represent the, the gang. Yeah. Okay. It was Hi, everyone. This is Lil. I'm back. Um, sorry about the drop call. Another question came in about what were the challenges in using Kaizen? This one might go to Aaron and Udgit, but I'm sure Pam and Chris could comment on it too. Aaron, Udgit, you want to take a shot? Yeah, I can, I can say this is Udgit from um, Seminole County. Um, one of the biggest challenges that we saw in, is, um, and I remember Pam saying this when we were in our Kaizen event, is make sure you have time to do the Kaizen event. Don't rush through it. Um, it it's very easy to be able to go through it and, 